If you are God's lamb, please, please kill me or cure me. I don't want to live anymore. I'm not a husband. I'm not a father. I'm no good. And at that instant, it was like the darkness and the blackness left my life. And the tears began to flow. And for the first time since I was nine years old, the tears did run. And the guilt left my life. And the violence and the anger and the hatred left my life. And Jesus Christ became Lord and Savior of my life that morning. And since that time, I didn't know what would happen, but God healed my mind, my memory. The drug addiction, the alcoholism was instantaneously gone, delivered. And from that moment, I knew that I had to tell the story of what had happened to me. My life was only spared to tell others about the place that I had seen and the hope of Jesus Christ to save mankind from this terrible fate. Here we are again wondering whether hell is for the bad guys or the good guys. I'd like to introduce the subjects O-B-E-N-D-E. -E. You know what clinical death is, where heart stops, breathing stops, and we start life again, restart the breathing in the heart. They come from death back to life, a reversible situation before rigor mortis sets in. Out of the body experiences and near death experiences are entirely different. Near death experience, I hold a gun up at you and say, give me your money. You may get scared to death, but that's a near death experience, but you didn't come anywhere near dying. Almost near crash auto accident. That's a near death experience, but nothing involving stopping the heart, stopping breathing. And yet, uh, most of the authors that write these books are including NDEs and OBEs with clinical death. We're just investigating clinical death where people actually die and come back. Now, out of the body experiences is a way to get there without dying. How'd you like to find out what death feels like without dying? Well, deep hypnosis can get you there. You see your guru over in India and learn the meditation techniques in the correct mantra. Uh, you can have uh, chemical hypnosis. You can go scrying with your crystal ball. Uh, you can have kundalini the electrical stimulus of the coiled snake down the base of the spine, the, the chakral sites, and all of the acupuncture is based upon uh, ways of getting out of the body to experience life beyond the body, separating spirit from the body. Uh, this is the definition in the Bible, when the spirit separates from the body, but they're talking about a permanent separation, not a man-made separation. And we, in turn, are talking nothing about NDEs or OBEs. We're talking about clinical death. And this is where the great majority of the people that have true experiences occur. One of the cases we're going to show tonight is uh, Charles McCaig a 57-year-old mail carrier who <clears throat> was having chest pain. We took him to the office, put him on a treadmill, and started the treadmill until he got his chest pain again. He was attached to an EKG. The EKG went haywire. We knew he had chest pain. Before we could stop the machine, he dropped dead. Unfortunate. Only one in 5,000 do that, so don't be afraid of EKG stress test. But when he dropped dead, he had a very peculiar situation. Uh, he convulsed like most people do when they first die and the heart stops applying blood to the brain. Eyes rolled up, sputtered, turned blue, stopped breathing. The nurse started IV, I started external heart massage. The strangest thing happened when I would stop resuscitating to put in a pacemaker. When I came to Dr. Allen said my hair was literally standing on the end and my eyes had already started dilating. And uh, I was absolutely, uh, just absolutely scared to death. 
was horrified. My life was what you might call normal. I partied lots. Not all that bad, but I had joined the church at a small, young age because my parents had said, let's go down to the front and join the church. I really didn't realize what it was to belong to the church or accept Christ until that day. And I had early in one morning at work, I had gone to the, walked to the local clinic in my hometown and, tell, and telling them I thought I was having a heart attack. I didn't tell anyone I was going, and they sent me on up to the clinic where Dr. Rollins was. They kept me about three or four days and then gave me a stress test. On that stress test, I told the girl, Pam, that was running the stress test that uh, I was dying let me off, and that's the last I remember of that. And uh, when I came to, uh, Dr. Rollins was giving me CPR. And he asked me what was the matter because I was looking so scared and so forth. And uh, I had told him I'd been to hell, I needed help. And he said, well, keep your health to yourself. I'm a doctor, I'm trying to save your life. You need a minister for that. As he was giving me CPR, he was trying to install a pacemaker with the other hand and do it with one. I would fade out and then He'd start again and bring me back. I watched what was going on, like some people say I was floating in the air or up on the ceiling. I was up above it and could look down and see things. And I kept asking, please help me, please help me, I don't want to go back to hell. And Pam said, well, he needs help, do something. And at that time, he said, say this short prayer after me. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you save my soul and keep me alive, I'll be on the hook for you forever. And if I die, please keep me out of hell. And after that, the other experiences was real pleasant. I saw my stepmother, my mother. My mother passed away when I was about five months old. I never saw a photograph of her. And I was able to recognize who she was. And my stepmother had passed away approximately 10 years before. They were together. They, they, I did not have any contact physically or mentally with them. All I remember was they kept their hands outreached to me. And I remember later that I made a remark that I'd always heard it, but now I knew it. And Dr. Rollins asked me, what did I mean? And I said, well, I've always heard you couldn't carry your money with you and I looked and they didn't have pockets. I know that's weird, but I was trying to take in everything I could see. I must have thought I was gonna get back so I could tell it. And after I saw them, my next experience was walking down a lane that had colors on both sides, just brilliant colors. I have dabbled in art and I, or Rembrandt, either one could not be, be produce those colors they were so bright. This light surrounded me, and I believe to this day that was the Holy Spirit that surrounded me and took care of me. And I've never felt so good and so safe in all my life. After all this was over, I realized what had really happened. It was a double conversion. Not only had this make-believe prayer converted this atheist on the floor, it had also converted this atheist doctor that it was working on him. That's the only reason I can appear to you here now, to tell you that there is a life after death, and it ain't all good. Most of you viewers out there can tell the difference between simple fainting, clinical death, and biologic death. Charles McKay, take that case for example, who was on the treadmill. I could tell that he was in clinical death, he had a startled question on his face. He was about to ask the question. He looked dumbfounded at me as he's walking on the treadmill. I noticed his heart had stopped, his breathing had stopped, but he was still walking and talking for a minute or two before no brain to the blood flow to the brain registered and he dropped dead. Uh, he was dead and didn't even know it. I should have told him, but what did he do? As soon as we started the clinical